Hello everyone, it's Living Online here for Server Pro, and today I'll be showing you ways on how to prevent lag on a Minecraft Java server. One of the many ways you can improve performance on your Java server is by changing the server type to paper. Paper is generally considered to be more performant in comparison to other Minecraft types due to further optimizations found in the server code. Paper also includes timings, enabling you to find out what's slowing down your server so you can tackle it and increase performance. Another bonus is that it can still run most Bucket and Spigot plugins as well. We'll go over that in more detail later in this video, but to install paper on your server, you need to head to server.pro and go into your server control panel. At the dashboard, all you have to do is press change to open up a set of settings. There you just have to press on the type section and select paper. Then you can reinstall the server and wait until the changes have taken effect. Another way you can reduce lag on your server is by pre-generating your world. Pre-generating your world means that your world is generated with a plugin, so your server doesn't experience immense lag when players are exploring. It's highly recommended you follow this step, as this is one of the leading causes for server lag even if you have paper installed. In order to do this, you'll need to have this plugin installed. As always, we'll leave the link to it in the description. When you're on the download page, all you have to do is click the download now button. That should instantly download the plugin file. When the download is finished, you need to head to your server. Then click on the files tab on the left and in that section you should open up the plugins folder. All you have to do here is drag in the plugin file you just downloaded and that's it, the plugin is installed. Before proceeding, make sure to restart the server for the necessary files to be generated. When that done, you should head to the server dashboard and copy the host name. Afterwards, launch your Minecraft application and when it's open, head to the multiplayer section. Click add server and in the server address section, paste the host name. Once that's done, head into your server and when it's generated, it means we can now start pre-generating the world using commands. The first thing you should be doing is setting a world border. A world border is important because it can prevent super large file sizes and lag on your server. To get a world border set up, you should type in the command slash world border set and then the radius you want the border to be. I'll be setting it to 1000 as an example for this video. The radius number you set it to is the part of the world that's going to be pre-generated on the server. To pre-generate that border, you're going to want to use the command slash fcp fill vanilla and then set a chunk buffer. The chunk buffer is how many chunks outside your world border you want to have pre-generated. We recommend doing somewhere between 5 to 10. That's so if players are on the edge of the world border, they're not generating chunks outside of it and causing lag. After that, you want to type in the name of your world. Since our world is just called world, I'll type that in and press enter for the pre-generation to start. If at any point you want to see how much of the world is left to generate, you can use the command at slash fcp pending. It'll say generating chunks and the percentage of how much has been generated. If you don't want to have to keep using the command though, you can also refer to the console section on your server. There you'll see live updates of the chunks generated and how many are left to go. During this generation process, you should not be playing, so make sure you set aside some time to do this before letting other players on the server. After a while, the chunk generation process will complete and you'll know it's done when it says 100%. If you then go on your server and walk around, you'll see that lag is minimal since the chunks set have already been generated. After installing paper onto your server, you can take further steps in reducing lag by optimizing features in the paper.yml file. To find that file, you need to head into your file section and scroll down until you see a paper.yml text document. Inside that file, you'll see there are a lot of options you can tweak. If you don't know which features to tweak to increase performance correctly, we recommend you follow the settings from this Spigot post. The link to this post will be in the description, but when you're there, you should scroll down and open up the paper.yml spoiler the button. That'll show you the best settings for optimal performance. Back on the server file, if at any point you have trouble finding each feature, you can press Ctrl and F and type in the feature to find it faster. After you've made all the configurations you desire, ensure you press save file to confirm all the changes. Then quickly restart the server to ensure the changes take effect. If your server performance hasn't improved as much as you would want it to, you can also optimize the bucket.yml file, the spigot.yml file and the server.properties file. The best settings for each of those files will also be shown on the spigot forum post, so make sure to click the link below if you're interested. 
As mentioned before, Paper includes timings, a feature that enables you to find out exactly what is slowing down your server. If you're still having performance issues after the last few steps, but not sure exactly what the problem is, timing reports are the perfect option. What you need to do in this step is head into your server and type in slash timing spaced. Press enter and after a couple seconds it'll generate a timings report. To view it, you should click it and press yes. That'll open up a page on your browser detailing all kinds of info about your server. If you hover over the graph, you can see specific information like TPS, TPS loss, chunks, and more. I can see that on two occasions, TPS loss was way higher than the average. So I'll be selecting those time periods using the selector at the bottom. When I've done that, I can scroll down and see that at the top, most of the server tick issues were to do with full server tick. If you have similar issues, you can open up the drop down list and target what exactly is slowing down the server. Say for example, you have entities or tile entities causing a lot of lag, there are plugins you could download to improve performance. There are some plugins you can install on your server that help clean up performance and get TPS up. For example, if you have an issue with entities causing lags such as cows and pigs, there's a plugin you can download to fix that. That's the StackMob plugin, we'll leave a link to it in the description. Basically, the StackMob plugin enhances server performance by stacking and merging entities. Your animal pens will go from looking like this to looking like this. This is a cause for a lot of lag on servers and it may improve your server drastically, so make sure to download this if needed. However, if you're still having issues, you may benefit from installing the ClearLag plugin. ClearLag is designed to reduce lag by clearing out mobs every 5 minutes, but it also has a lot of other features. If you're having problems with other aspects causing lag on your server, it's guaranteed there's a plugin that can assist in fixing it. For example, if you're experiencing lag due to automatic farms, you can download the Auto Farm plugin. The Auto Farm plugin lets you run through fields and break tens of crops at once. Its features are configurable too, so you can tweak it to your liking. Hopefully though, if you follow all the steps showcased in this video, you'll be able to reduce lag on your server drastically. Well, that's it for this video. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them down below. And if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to see more from our channel. Thank you for watching.